Okay, let's do this. Hey, what's up, guys? Nick White here. I do tech and coding stuff on Twitch and YouTube. Check the description for all my information. You could support me on, um, if you sub to me on Twitch, Patreon, whatever. Even just uh, liking and subscribing or Discord or whatever is awesome. So, I am streaming again. I did this on stream earlier. If you guys want to check out for those, uh, I'm going to try and do them a lot more. But um, this problem is called Merge Intervals. Very popular. Uh, it looks like the method signature changed. It used to be like uh, a little bit different, but you know, I, this one's this way is fine or whatever. Uh, given a collection of intervals, merge all overlapping intervals. Okay. So what this is, is we have input like this, like uh, one, three, two, six, you know, uh, each one of these, it's a 2D array is the input. And that's what we're going to be outputting too. Um, and we're looking at this 2D array and each sub array is going to be an interval and it's going to be of size two. The beginning of the interval is the first element. The ending is the second element beginning first element ending second. So some of these intervals overlap like one, three and two, six overlap because two, the beginning of this interval is less than the ending of this interval. So you could see if you were to like plot this out kind of um, number wise, you would see, okay, one and then two and then three and then six. And like this would be the first array, you know, one, two, three. And then this would be the second array. And there's a little bit or well, you know what I mean? Like four, five, six or whatever. This would be the second array from two to six if we're doing inclusive or whatever. And this would be the first array. And the little, um, whatever we're calling, uh, overlap, that would be the overlap right there, right? So that's what they mean. They just want you to output the, uh, overlap version. You want to merge them so that you take the beginning, the, uh, right here, and then you take the larger of the ending values if they overlap. So we put six in this case. And, uh, it's a pretty simple problem. You kind of just loop through. And you do exactly what we just said. Uh, there's no more over. It's f there's basically two conditions. You check a current um, interval and the next interval. And if the next interval's beginning is less than the current interval's end, you found an overlap, like in this case. Um, and then you merge them. Otherwise, you just keep going on your way, and they don't merge. So it's fine. You just put them into the output array as you go. Like eight ten comes after, you know, this comes out. The beginning comes after the end, so it's fine. Beginning comes after the end, so it's fine. The only case is where the beginning does not come after the end of the previous one, and then you merge them. Uh, and it's actually we're counting equals too, so it's um, this has to be greater than or greater than not. Uh, if it's equal, we still merge. So that's the whole thing. You just merge them, you output. Um, to do this, we are going to, first thing we'll do is we'll just check, okay, if intervals.length is uh, less than or equal to one, that means there's either zero intervals or one interval is the input. And we could just return intervals because like, there, we're not gonna be merging any, any intervals. It's either, that means that there's only one interval in the whole input or there's none. So that's it, we'll just return it. Um, we are not able to assume that this is sorted. So that's kind of annoying. You do want it sorted because in order for us to check the current in the next, we want to make sure the next has a greater beginning value than the current beginner value. Uh, otherwise this method of checking the beginning value towards the end against the ending value isn't going to work. If like we're putting 15, 18 at the front, like that doesn't even make sense. So, um, we do have to sort. Uh, we're going to be using a comparator to sort. So we'll do arrays.sort and we'll take in intervals. Uh, that's what we're going to be sorting. And we're going to pass in um, the current array and the next array. So you could say array of one um, and you could say array of two. And then you can use this function and then we'll do, okay, we pass in. We're going to be looping through current array and next array and we'll sort based on integer.compare of array of one's first element and array of two's first element. And what this does is it sorts our input on the first elements. So it makes it look like this, right? It puts the element with the smaller first uh, beginning value first. So that's really nice. This sorts our entire input here. Um, you could check that if you want. To uh, 
actually do this properly, we're not going to be able to, I would like to do this. I'd like to say output array is equal to new int, uh, cause we, this is our input. This is our output, uh, 2d array, just like our input, but we don't know the size of our output. It's going to be different than the input size usually. So if we merge, it's going to be different and we don't know how many times we're going to merge. So to deal with that, we're going to do a list of integer, a list of int arrays called output array. Uh, so an array list, because you don't need to specify the size. And at the end, we'll be returning um, like output array. I don't even remember this. Output array dot two array. So you turn it into an actual array at the end. It's a list. And then we turn it into an array. Oops. And then you pass in, um, you know, output array new int of output array dot size and then i think it's like this to convert it into the 2d array at the end so that's what you do i'm not 100 percent sure that's completely right but that's what i remember um so the strategy here is just we're gonna take reference to a current interval and how we're gonna do that is we're gonna say we're gonna start it out and we're gonna say okay current interval will be equal to intervals of zero so in this case it'll be equal to one three right and what we'll do is we'll put this onto our output array right away we'll say output array dot add current interval so we'll just add a current we'll, we're going to take the first interval as our current interval we're going to add that onto our output array so output array will be equal to this at first and what we're going to do now is we're going to loop through the intervals in uh, the 2D array intervals, and we're going to say, okay, uh, current begin is going to be equal to the current interval of zero. That's the beginning of our current interval. Uh, current end is going to be equal to current interval of one. That's gonna be equal to the end of the current interval. And then we're gonna say the next beginning, uh, the beginning of the next interval will be equal to intervals, whatever we're looping through all of the intervals, like, you know, like if we have this input array, we're going to loop through each interval, like, you know, interval by interval, we're going to go boom, 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 boom. And um, we're going to say, okay, next begin is equal to intervals of zero. Um, next end is going to be equal to intervals of one. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, if our current interval, our current interval is going to be the one before the next interval. So we're gonna be comparing one three against the next one, like two six. If our current intervals end is greater than or equal to our next begins, you know what I mean? If three is greater than the next beginning, that means there's an overlap there. And what we can do is we can update our current interval. We can update our current interval's ending value, which it's already in the output array. So our output array has this interval in. We take an interval at the beginning. We put it into the output array. We're just like, all right, this is an interval. We're putting it in the output array. And now we're going to update the end of it to become the math.max of whatever it was, the current end. So three versus the mer the overlapping intervals end because we want the max of the overlap at ending. So we sorted it and now we know that these are overlapping and we want the maximum of these ending values. So we check it against the current end and the next end and we update it here. And just updating it here, since it's already in this array, we can update it within the output array by just doing this. So we say current interval was added onto output array, saying current interval of one, uh, changing the ending boundary to math.max of these ending boundaries right here, three and six literally changes it within the output array. So we don't even have to remove or add or anything. We just keep going. Otherwise, now here's the uh, part that is important. Otherwise, if the intervals are not, mer if we're not gonna see a merge, meaning like 810 comes after 26 and that's fine, they're not getting merged. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, let's update our current interval now to interval, the next interval that we're looking at so we'll update it to like 810 or whatever, and then we will add onto our output array. We'll add it onto our output array, and the process completely restarts. So we just do output.add uh, current interval, and this will add onto our output array 
um, 810. And in that case, that's exactly what we want to go onto our output array because it's fine. And if there was another merging interval, like for example, if this was like 911, we would, you know, it would hit this point and we would see, okay, we'd update it and we'd see a merge and we'd update it in the output array and it would up it would check the max of 10 and 11 and we would just go, okay, eight, we'd update it within, but it's not. So in the other case, we just keep going and we keep creating these new intervals, adding them on. The whole idea is you put an initial interval onto the output array and then you keep going and whenever you see a merge, you go until you're not seeing merges anymore. And while you're merging, you're just changing the end. You're only changing the ending value of the current interval on the output array. And you could change it from the output array just by referencing the variable within the loop. So that's the whole idea here. Let me know if you guys have any questions about that. Uh, it took me a while to kind of understand this. Like if you could see all of this friggin', freaking, um, you know, look at all these errors. I was doing it on stream. Uh, if anyone was watching, like there, it took a while, so um cannot be converted into int intervals of zero sorry intervals of uh you have to put i of zero always making typos but um yeah not intervals of i of zero interval um dude sorry you're looking at the current interval so you're not not intervals of zero sorry um what am i doing dude dude intervals of zero what int Int current interval. It's an int array. Dude, so many errors. Oh my god, dude. I don't want to do this again. I don't know if I confused you guys by doing that. Okay, there you go. That's the solution. I don't really want to do it again. Sorry about the typos. You take the current interval and you put it onto the array. You keep going as you're merging them and you change the ending value from the output array, but within the loop, you don't have to remove from the output array or anything. It just, since we added the it, it as a variable, we can reference that variable even while it's in the output array and change the values to the maximum ending boundary. Um, if it's not getting merged, we just move on to a new interval and add it onto the array. If it's not getting merged, we just keep putting them on. And while we do merge, we just keep changing the ending values. At the end, you just convert it back into the integer the hardest part was probably just the conversions from list to int and uh, make sure they're sorted because otherwise you can't do it all. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you guys. Uh, definitely, you know, hit me up on, I'm trying to stream again. So hit me up on there and, uh, you know, appreciate you guys and let me know if you have any questions. See you in the next video. All right. See ya.